belonging. Everybody wants to belong. Hopefully, we belong at home. But we also belong to other places, too. Work, a club, church. Almost all of these places require certain things for membership. In the home, you generally need to be a blood relative or be adopted to truly belong. At work, obviously, you need to be hired in the first place. And at the club, you may have had an, to have enough money to join or be of the right gender or be interested in the right hobby. But what about church? What is needed to belong to a church? Often Christians act and speak as if people need to believe certain things and behave in certain ways. If you don't believe or behave according to the rules, then you cannot belong. We believe that Jesus demonstrated that belonging is not conditional upon believing and behaving in certain ways. In fact, Jesus seemed to widen belonging to include everyone he came into contact with, regardless of behavior or belief. Witness all those who normally didn't belong in Jesus' society and how Jesus welcomed them. Samaritans, women, the disabled, the sick, the sex workers, the alcoholics, the criminals, the sinners, and pagans. Not that Jesus approved of sinful behaviors, far from it. Time and time again we hear Jesus say, go and sin no more. So what does belonging look like with Jesus? There are at least two broad kinds of belonging. There is the kind of belonging that is proprietary. This thing belongs to me. I bought it. I made it. I own it. There is another kind that is relational. My wife and I belong to each other. I belong to a club. I belong to those because of my free choice. We belong to each other. The truth is that God can and does claim that we are all, every human that has ever lived, we are his in the proprietary way. He has a right to do that. He made us. He could not, we could not exist for even one moment without him. However, that is not the limit of what he wants with us. He really wants to belong to us in a relational way. This is why Jesus treated everyone as if they belonged, because he was, on God the Father's behalf, and out of his own overflowing love, pursuing all the people around him with all that he had. In order to do that, woo the people around him so that he and they could belong to each other, he did not put up any walls or barriers to belonging with him. There was literally no one who had to be excluded. Just like any relationship, there is more shallow belonging and deeper belonging. My wife and I belong to each other in a way that no other human in this life ever will. And even as we belong to one another deeply now, we will, Lord willing, belong to each other still more deeply in the future. Everyone belonged to Jesus, and he belonged to them. Some chose to deepen that relationship, and as they did so, they changed. They still sometimes did the wrong things, maybe even often. They still had questions. Their lives were not perfect. Nonetheless, they belonged. Our church strives to live according to this model. We strive to recognize and live as Jesus did. Everyone belongs with us, and we belong with everyone. If we in any way make you or anyone else feel that they do not belong, please forgive us, and please try to lovingly tell us. Maybe together we can make things right. So what about membership? What about leadership? What about behaving and believing the right things? The honest truth is that none of us believes all the right things, and none of us behaves in all the right ways. In Jesus' mission and life, there were markers along the way that indicated deeper levels of belonging, not that others did not belong, but that some had mutually chosen with Jesus to journey into deeper and deeper relationship and belonging. He called some to become fishers of men. He called some to come up on the mountain with him. He called some to celebrate the Passover with him. He called some to watch with him as he prayed on the last night before his death. And as they journeyed into deeper belonging, their lives changed. Tax collectors returned their stolen money, sex workers stopped their trade, the disabled were healed, minorities brought the gospel to their entire village. In our church, we have some markers that indicate and celebrate a journey into deeper belonging with each other, but more significantly with God. They are not meant to be barriers to belonging. Instead, they are meant to be celebrative marks of a mutual deepening of relationship. Some of the way markers in our journey into deeper, more fully belonging, full belonging with each other are attendance on Sundays, volunteerism, engaging in group Bible studies, professing our faith publicly, baptism, 
Sometimes Jesus met people who chose, on their part, not to engage in deeper relationship and belonging with him. Take, for example, the rich young ruler of Mark 10, 17-22. Jesus invites this young man into deeper belonging by identifying for him the thing standing in his way, money. Sadly, the young man chooses, at least for the time being, to refuse belonging more deeply with God in favor of his money. Jesus does not put up a barrier. Instead, he identifies the barrier that already exists within the man. In our church, we try very hard to follow this model, too. We don't want to ever put up bar barriers to belonging. Sometimes, however, people choose to journey only so far in deepening our belonging to one another. Some choose that they will only attend church services and that they will not engage in the mission of God. They might want to have a personal spiritual relationship with God that will not particularly change their lives. Others may have other things that get in the way of a deeper relationship with God in the church. Things that get in the way could be money, power, addictions that people are not willing to try to let go of, racism, bigotry, hate, selfishness, and more. When this occurs, we, as a church, try to lovingly point out, as Jesus did with the rich young man, the barriers people may have to coming into deeper relationship with God in the church. Sadly, we do not always do this well or consistently. For that, we are truly sorry. We hope that if we ever approach you regarding a potential barrier to deeper relationship in a way that is offensive or erroneous, that you will tell us honestly what you are feeling, and that we will respond well to that. After all, God says that he has given us a ministry of reconciliation. With the Spirit's leading, we can get through the tough stuff together. It is also true that sometimes people disagree with one another about what Jesus really taught. Unfortunately, because we are not actually Jesus, though we do try to be little Christs, and we are human, sometimes those different beliefs about what Jesus taught can get in the way of deeper belonging. At this church, we try to create lots of space for people to understand what God teaches as best they can. This means that we try to equip one another with good tools to understand the Bible, it also means that we try to articulate what beliefs we hold in common with many other Christians, and we share with other Christian Reformed churches in particular. Most of all, we try to examine our beliefs in the light of the Bible so that we can constantly be held accountable to what Jesus actually taught. Sometimes people may disagree with what we believe on certain matters of faith. For example, we believe in a triune God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one God. Some people cannot bring themselves to accept this teaching. Because this is a belief that we hold to be an essential truth at the very core of what we believe, then a difference on this topic would prevent a person from becoming a member of the church. This means that the way markers of membership, public profession of faith, and baptism would not be a possibility for a person attending our church services who could not bring themselves to agree with the teaching of the church on this. This does not mean that personal relationships within the church cannot continue to deepen and grow, nor does it mean that we as a church are declaring that somehow the person's relationship with God cannot continue to grow and deepen. Who are we to say that? It is supposed to be a loving indicator that the church is concerned that the incapability incapacity to believe in the Trinity may get in the way of a deeper relationship with God as he declares himself to be. This could be the same with other issues, things that are often seen to be moral issues. Our church believes morality is really about love, the self-sacrificing radical love of God, a love that in human beings is meant to be expressed with God, with other human beings, and with creation. Acts that break or bend those intended loving relationships are barriers to deeper belonging. A business person who charges more money for supposed organic produce that is actually not what is advertised, for example, is breaking the, the intended loving relationship that is supposed to exist between fellow human beings. If the church community becomes aware of this breaking of love, then the church will hopefully lovingly seek to make the business owner aware of this barrier to deeper relationship with God and with others. If the business owner refuses to let go of the behaviors that break relationship, then the church may take action to attempt to firmly make the business owner aware of the seriousness of what they are doing. The church may even reverse certain way markers, like membership, as a way of trying to get through to someone who we believe has lost their way. Ultimately, however, we believe that what you believe and how you behave ought not be barriers to belonging at this church. You belong to God no matter what. 
He wants you and all other people to belong to him in a mutually chosen, loving relationship, a deeper relationship than simple proprietary belonging. We believe that we exist as a church to help each other and all people whom God brings our way to come into that deepening relationship if they will. Sometimes, because of our human brokenness, that journey of deepening relationship can get pretty messy. Sometimes, by God's grace, we get to celebrate way markers indicating a deepening belonging relationship with God and His church. Always, we seek to believe and live by the truth that God is pursuing all of us with love and claims, if we will let Him, to belong to us as we belong to Him.